All right, guys, I've uh, been asked several times what the differences are between the civilian 850Js and the military 850Js. That's something we're getting ready to go over today. it's Clinton from CNC equipment if you guys don't know we uh, sell a lot of the 850Js we've sold over 30 of the uh, just the military green 850Js and we've sold a bunch of the civilian ones too 750s 850s so I want to do a video comparing the two what the differences are between the military and the regular civilian ones if you guys look closely you'll see a few things that's popping out here um, these are both similar tractors the way they're set up and everything but we'll start first with the cabs on these two you notice the military this is a military cab I actually come with two different versions of cabs um, they have a fully armored cab which we never get those and this is what they call a split cab if you guys see right up there is a big set of bolts this cab actually unbolts that top two foot of that cab will actually unbolt and come off they do that to fit that into special shipping uh reasons like in uh back of ships kind of airplanes stuff like that so they've got it where it's down lower they can cut it down lower to load it in special cargo ships and stuff like that so being that cab splits there you also notice that these windows bolt in so you can actually can unbolt that window frame if you look over in the civilian tractor you'll see none of those bolts the window frames are glued in uh the doors are the same on both tractors they'll just unbolt but front window has the same row of bolts around it it will come out too civilian ones just uh, glued in there so that is a big difference on the outside of the cabs another thing you might notice how wide the air conditioner is back here the civilian one is not near that wide the military ones have a little bigger um, cooling section in there for working in the hot environments they also have three fans in the back there too you only see two fans on that one so we'll step on uh, inside here that's about the biggest differences on the cabs on the outside like I say they've got a bigger air conditioner on the military ones these were kind of set up for working in warmer environments i'll show you a little more on that later um doors are the same everything's the same about those same part number as its a uh, civilian counterpart civilian glass fits in here you can put civilian glass and glue it into these frames if you wanted to you notice this is just one big panel the civilian one has actually a vent window in the back and a flat panel in the front you can actually put that stuff into this tractor we've done that before so um of course this cab's going to be green all throughout these tractors are set up with tremble grade control it's kind of getting obsolete now it's about 12 years old or so these tractors are so technology um another thing you'll see here too that's actually your machine gun holder that sits in there so the other differences you'll see is just a blank plate here there's no radio in these tractors they don't come with them like i can put them in there these do have air everything's pretty much similar headliner and all that stuff's the same as civilian tractor armrest um all that stuff is the same dash layout the only difference with the seat these all come with a vinyl seat. Usually cab machines will come with a cloth one like that one over there. Um, I'll step outside here. Another difference on the seat, you'll see it's just a spring suspension seat. Most of your civilian tractors are optional. They'll have an air ride seat in them. I'll show you that one over there. But that was optional on that part of it. So kind of kind of bare, more bare bones stuff but we do have ac and and all that good stuff in here so we'll jump over to the civilian tractor and look at that all right up here in the civilian tractor you can see it's got the john deere charcoal inside the cab um this seat has its cloth seat this actually does not have the air ride seat option it's got the same spring suspension seat so like i said that was an option this tractor doesn't have it same armrest um somebody's cracked a dash in this one that's all the same this one does have the radio up here you can see same headliner and all that good stuff so 
pretty much everything's the same like say these do have these nicer vent windows on the side that is something uh, it's kind of missing from the military tractor so you like see you can put all this stuff in those it's pretty expensive to buy it from john deere but uh it can be done all right we'll jump into the engines both these tractors have the uh john deere 6090 it's a nine liter engine six cylinder it's rated at 205 horsepower it's common rail computer controlled a um, couple more things extra on the military ones they do have a pair of dosing filters fuel dosing filters so what that means the military set these up to run on jet fuel and jet fuel doesn't have lubrication in it so those dosing filters actually provide a little bit of extra lubrication to the fuel if needed um, they also have a diesel fuel cooler in here too again that's for running those hotter environments so this is something you won't see over there another thing that's different on them they have a little electric lift pump here to pump fuel up to the uh, injection pump it is actually a different part number than the civilian one we believe that is for the jet fuel reason too um, but a civilian one will work in here most people aren't running jet fuel in these things so don't recommend it anyway there's not as much lubrication in it um, one more thing you'll see in this engine compartment there's another cooler right there and what that is that's actually for the winch if you had a winch on the back of here that is a hydraulic winch cooler so other than that everything else is pretty much the same we'll step over to the civilian one all right up here in the civilian one you guys can see if it's dark in there no coolers no fuel cooler no winch cooler no that stuff's back here there's no dosing filters for the jet fuel a little more simpler stuff going on but it is the same exact engine so you guys will notice these military tractors will have different part numbers like for these side shields they're exactly the same the only difference is these are painted green so they have different part numbers for a lot of things like these track frames here they'll have a different part number even though it's the same as this one the only difference is this lifting hook here while we're talking about lifting hooks you guys will see they have hooks on these things every which place for tie downs lifting uh, there's a set of lifting ears on the front so it throws a lot of extra steel on the back of these but that being said these tractors are heavier than their civilian models big old lifting hook up there you can see all this massive extra steel back here well this one does not have that and this uh, set of hooks here it's like an inch and a half thick that actually runs underneath the dozer a good ways there too so adds quite a bit more weight these tractors are probably about another 2,000 pounds heavier than their civilian counterparts here just because of all that extra stuff all right we'll take a look at the undercarriage next both tractors here have 24 inch wide pads on them you notice there's about four inches of clearance between the edge of the pads and the final drive on this military one we'll come over to this civilian one it only has about an inch and a half of clearance there between the two what the difference is here this is a regular straight 850j with a semi u blade it's 128 inches wide the uh, military spec this one up with a 140 inch wide blade and whenever you get a 140 inch wide blade in a john deere it's going to be considered a wide track so normally on the civilian one if this was a wide track it would have 30 inch wide pads so that's why you guys are seeing this extra gap in here you guys watch some of our videos or dirt perfect has one of these we've sold them he actually put 30 inch pads on here gives you a little extra flotation on that so the reason that the military spec these up with the 140 inch wide blade they were replacing the cat d7g had the same width blade and the cat had the 24 inch track so i believe that's why the they spec they spec these up the same to uh, have the same specs as the cat there that they were replacing so that being said you can guys can see this right here the ball on the end of the draft arms how much wider it is on the uh, military one versus the, the civilian one so you got a different part number there between the two the final drives are actually different too because they're offset a little bit for that wide track um, a civilian final drive will fit these just has to be a wide track version another thing you might notice different on the sheet metal is this battery box compartment if you look right here there's a bump out 
And the reason is the military has their own style of batteries. You see there's two big square batteries. They run these batteries in everything. They keep that simple. So they have the same battery in every piece of equipment. We'll jump over to the civilian one here in a second and show you some of that. They have just the regular group 31s. This is actually a military jump start receptacle. It's 24 volts. You'll see some extra plumbing in here that again is for that winch circuit. It's actually a bypass there. So see a little bit of extra stuff going on in there. We'll jump over to the civilian one. You'll notice that this door is all flat and smooth here. Say the military had to bump that out for their big batteries. This one just has the two group 31s in it. You notice there's no um, winch bypass up there or anything like that. So this tractor is equipped with a ripper, so it does have a ripper valve in it. All your military tractors will have a ripper and a winch valve in there set up and plumb for them. So back end of the dozers, the bolt pattern's all the same. Civilian ripper will fit on a military tractor. Again, all that stuff is the same. Cylinders, blade cylinders, all that stuff is the same. Um, between uh, a regular standard track machine and a wide track. When you get into the LGP machines, they'll have a longer track frame, different cylinders and stuff like that. So we're up here at the front of the machine. You'll notice this one has three platforms. Again, that's for your grade control stuff. You got a couple of little square boxes up here. Again, that's where the grade control is located at. You'll notice this tractor does not have none of that. Another thing too to think about, we have installed some limerizers that go on these tractors. They normally bolt to these two bolts right here in the side of the hood. Then they go up on top of the cab. There's threaded holes on top of the cab. Civilian one's just a bolt on deal real quick and easy. If you notice over here, we've got these lifting hooks again that are in our way. So those have to be cut or modified to install your limb risers. The top of these military cabs do not have any threaded holes in them either. Um, those threaded holes are used, usually used for like say holding the limb risers on or lifting your cab up off the machine. The military has put hooks up here on the side. You'll see that to lift those up. One other item that's different is the fuel tank back here. You kind of notice that the panels are different. Um, if you look at those mounts up where the cab bolts on, you'll see those are welded to the fuel tank. We'll go over here in this one and you guys will actually see these are bolted onto the fuel tank. The reason is the armored cabs have a different mount for the armored cabs there. A little heavier, beefier duty. So they'll bolt down there. Like I said, they have these interchangeable where you can swap cabs on them. A regular civilian fuel tank will fit in one of these tractors. There's a couple modifications you got to do to the holes on those. We've had these machines apart from one end to the other, um, all sorts. We've got them in in all sorts of different shapes, forms, and functions. Um, they are very easy to work on the cab tilts up on them. We have a slew of parts, new and used in stock. We've got new final drives, all kinds of stuff for them. So if you guys have one of these tractors and are looking for something, um, we've definitely got uh, definitely got a lot of new and used parts for them. So everything in here is pretty much all the same on both tractors. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out. I know people's been asking for this video for a long time. And it's hard to get both kinds of tractors in at the same time. They're not sold and stuff. So these tractors are for sale at the moment. We usually always have a green military 850 in stock. Um, it just depends what's going on. Last year we had eight or nine of them at one time in stock. So all of our uh, contact info will be in the uh, description below. So you can get a hold of us on any machines or parts you might need. So. So your local John Deere dealer is actually a part, separate parts listing for these. It's under 850JR. The military designates everything with the R on the John Deere equipment. So these are actually called 850JR. So if you go searching on John Deere's parts, they have a cool online parts catalog anybody can get on. But you got to type in 850JR. That will pull up the parts listing for this machine here. Um, a lot of this stuff is the same interchangeable. If you got questions on any of that, let us know. Because some of this stuff you'll look up part numbers for and it will show obsolete just because it's painted green or it may be that that fuel tank's different or some little nitpicky thing and your dealer may say hey we can't get that part so call us up you know check with us email us or whatever 
we can tell you if those two parts are the same or not so 99% of the stuff is all the same like I say they may tell you that's obsolete can't get that this and that but 99% uh, of the time it will interchange and fit so guys got questions on that stuff definitely let us know hopefully that answers a lot of questions between the two machines if you want to see some more action of that machine in there i'll actually link uh dirt perfect's uh youtube channel down below in the comments he has a lot of videos of uh 850j that we sold him he's actually got a big tile pile and stuff on there he put 30 inch pads on there highly recommend the 30 inch pads on there with a the wide track blade if you can they push a lot better they'll float a lot better um unless you're just in super hard environments and stuff like that all the time we do have rippers we can put on these the guy wants to set them up with rippers so a lot of options there definitely give us a call on your 850 needs so if you guys like seeing these kind of videos give me a thumbs up if you got any questions leave them in the comments below so we're happy to help you out we'll see you guys next time